So I'm preemptively sorry if I misrepresent an influencer or don't know who they are. It is not shade at the influencer or anything. I'm not the target demographic for these people. Hello and welcome back to the Miscellaneous channel where we do miscellaneous things. I'm Zeleni. I typically cover pop culture, internet trends, and other miscellaneous things on this channel, so subscribe if that's your vibe. So today I just wanted to recap some internet drama that has gone on the past weekend or week. I started seeing a lot of information about this on my Twitter feed and honestly I was just really curious and wanted to investigate what this drama was about. I feel a little bit out of my element with this case because it involves a bunch of influencers that I'm not that aware of. It seems like influencers that target younger demographics than me, maybe teens or younger adults, but it's just a fascinating story. Also, at this time that I'm recording this video, there's not a whole lot of developments to the story aside from the initial allegations. It's not a fully complete story quite yet. So this video is meant to be more of like a, if you're completely out of the loop, this is an overview. I tried to Google and research, but it's still a little bit early in the whole thing to know a ton of information yet. So if you're in the loop about all this, then you probably won't learn anything new from this video, but this is meant to be for people that haven't really heard about this or maybe have just seen the hashtag and don't know what it's about. So what I'm talking about is this scandal involving a woman named Sophia Nur, the woman who allegedly scammed a bunch of LA influencers. But on November 18th, several influencers went on Clubhouse, uh, which is an audio chat room type app, and started realizing that they were all scammed by the same person, Sophia. Soon after that, the conversation moved to Twitter spaces, which is sort of a newish feature of Twitter that is similar. It's providing an audio chat room. A lot of people can join in and listen to people talk. A lot of times like famous people or influencers will use those spaces to talk to fans or whatever. So the conversation moved to Twitter spaces and that's where the whole situation blew up on Twitter. On November 19th, the hashtag Surviving Sophia went viral on Twitter as well as Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow isn't directly involved, but he is involved in the lies that the Sophia person told. Some of the most noteworthy influencers involved in this is a man named Jeff Wittek. I don't know how to say his name, but I believe he was originally part of David Dobrik's vlog squad. <laughs> and some of the other influencers were Ricky Thompson and Denzel Dion. There was also a woman named Camille with some allegations and there was a lot of people, a lot of influencers that recognized Sophia and had been duped by her whether it was financial or not. But this whole thing felt so like Ingrid Goes West in real life. If you guys have seen the movie Ingrid Goes West, it's sort of about a girl like this. She's broke and she's kind of crazy, kind of obsessed with famous influencers and throughout the movie befriends a famous influencer with a lot of lies and deceptions about who she is. And it sounds like Sophia Nur did some of the same things. Some things we know about Sophia are that she is Canadian uh, by nationality. And the big number being thrown out about all this is that she scammed influencers of a total of 11 million dollars. That number apparently is not confirmed. It's alleged and also very like blurry because when everyone came out about their stories, everyone's trying to come out about like the amounts that they got scammed and it's usually in the thousands, which is a significant amount of money, but it's not really adding up to millions of dollars that she stole. It sounds like she said at some point that she had 11 million dollars to somebody, but she said so many lies that it's unlikely the 11 million dollar number is true. So this woman would basically sneak in to elite social gatherings of influencers in LA. She was LA based. She would befriend influencers. She would tell them a lot of lies to get them to give her money. And everyone that describes her says she just happens to be everywhere at all times. Like 
every event it seemed like she was there and she always claimed she was a publicist. Her biggest claims were being a publicist, she always said she was in PR and she wasn't. She said she was dating Jack Harlow and that she was living with this Jeff Wittek guy, the vlog squad influencer guy. So I'm gonna put in the description a couple of Twitter threads that I found were the best summarizing all of the allegations and are my primary source for this video. I'll probably miss some details, so check those Twitter threads out in the description if you are curious. But other lies she told beyond her being a publicist and dating Jack Harlow and living with Jeff was that she was pregnant with Jack Harlow's baby and that she had an abortion at some point. She often said that she was cast in an upcoming Netflix show. <laughs> she allegedly to one person lied about being stranded in LA, that her friends or family had ditched her and that she needed a plane ticket so that a kind person bought her a plane ticket and a hotel room or something. She often lied about being stranded or having her wallet lost in order for others to pay for plane tickets or hotel rooms. And she would always claim that she would reimburse them and she never would. She also often at events when she brought along somebody or several people, she would say they were her cousin and people were weirded out that so many people were her cousin. <laughs> like she would just say everyone was her cousin. She also did some more serious lying, like she lied to somebody that her mother died and that she didn't have money to cover the funeral expenses, scammed that person out of $4,000 for that cause when her mother is not dead, allegedly. She also allegedly on multiple accounts lied about being sexually assaulted and like worse by Jack Harlow and by Jack Harlow's team. Very serious, serious allegations. She would say that her family took her money. There was one Twitter account that came out that said she was her cousin, like an actual cousin supposedly, and that Sophia had scammed her too. So I have no idea if that person is real. It could not be, I don't think it's confirmed. If it's true, that means that Sophia was scamming her family as well. She apparently snuck into the VMAs. She was on the VMAs red carpet somehow. She was at Drake's birthday party. People never knew how she got in and she was frequently getting kicked out. I saw a video of Dixie D'Amelio being interviewed by some other influencer that had dealt with the Sophia person. Dixie D'Amelio said she recognized her. She, she was like, I know who you're talking about she was getting kicked out all night she kept trying to say she was our friend and um, trying to get us to stop them kicking her out so it just sounds like she was a really like manipulative person or really had no moral reservations about anything that she did like she got really deep into these people's lives some of them one person I don't know if it was Jeff or one of these other guy influencers but he gave her her credit card information because she made this very intense dramatic story about being sexually fully sexually assaulted i don't want to say the word everyone sort of knew her so like there was a little bit of trust there so he gave out that credit card information obviously a very not smart move um but probably trying to just be generous and being trusting. Someone else, I think Ricky Thompson it was, yeah, Ricky Thompson gave her a key to her house. She had been in a lot of these influencers that she scammed. She had been in their homes. She had been in there when they weren't home. And there are also allegations of her breaking into homes, not, not these people's homes necessarily, but other people. There's an allegation of her meeting a guy on a dating app and drugging and robbing him which is a very serious thing so a lot of people are really mad at Sophia and are trying to get her in trouble something i haven't mentioned is that Sophia is still at large <laughs> out there no one knows where she is her social media presence is gone or disappeared or something people haven't heard her side of the story <laughs> people don't know where she is or how to find her and i'm just a little bit confused because i'm wondering if when at the time any of these robberies or scam moments happened if 
the authorities were contacted by these influencers or if they just like handled it themselves somehow like canceled the credit card or just took it as a loss or something like I'm not sure how the influencers dealt with the scamming as it happened like I wonder if like giving your credit card and then stealing money is that illegal because you gave your credit card it's kind of like when you leave your car keys in the car running and if someone steals it like i don't think the legal system is that much on your i don't i don't quite know how that works i just wonder how much like these influencers have pressed charges against her or if she's gotten in trouble with the law at all because someone that does this so frequently it's just hard to believe that she wouldn't have been arrested before or in jail <laughs> And I just really wonder if she is on the run, if there are grounds to arrest her with these claims. I would think the influencers would have to go to the police. So I'm not sure how it's going to unravel, but this is the first time that all of these influencers sort of realized that they were all scammed by this one person. It seems like before this, they thought it was an isolated incident that happened to them, but she's a serial scammer in LA. So I wanna talk a little bit about the Twitter conversation that happened around this, because that, that was the story. There was kind of a big debate on Twitter and there was two different camps <laughs> with this story. There were a lot of people that were shocked and appalled that she would do all this and thought she she's a horrible person, like she must be held accountable kind of thing. And then there was that whole other camp that was like definitely trolling and on the side of humor, but at the same time kind of praising her as like a mastermind scammer. <laughs> I think most of it is jokes, to be honest. Most of it is memes saying like, me going to Sophia's scamming class, taking notes. Like people just making silly memes about the influencers and getting them getting scammed, being dumb enough to get scammed. Uh, but a lot of the conversation was about like, blaming the influencers for being so dumb and gullible to get scammed like this. There's an element of like viewing the influencers as so rich that it doesn't matter, the scam doesn't matter, and making light of the actual robbery that might have taken place or the lying or the manipulation. So those are the two camps. One camp is defending Sophia and one camp is attacking her. I feel like I'm in the camp of more attack or you know, reasonably wanting her to be held accountable for this. I don't think it's particularly right to victim blame the influencers because it happens to the best of us that we are naive and gullible and fall for a plea of like a woman in need or a person in need and just fall for it. But I definitely understand the camp of seeing influencers flaunting their wealth all the time seeing the lifestyles they live of luxury when so much of the world doesn't live like that i understand like having resentment for that and not feeling that sorry for the influencers so i feel like i understand both sides i don't think it's black and white I hope that any of the influencers scammed were able to learn their lesson and not get themselves in situations like that again if they can help it. I imagine this girl will, will get caught. Maybe she ran, ran away back to Canada, ran away some to some other country. Who knows where she went. They'll probably find her if charges are pressed and this will be a developing story, but for right now, it just feels like this is a job for the system or the authorities or somebody and not the public, even though she's not in the public eye. There's also something kind of like poetic because see, this is sort of like what happens in Ingrid Goes West as well. And these stories like the bling ring is another pretty famous instance of something like this. And that was real life, a bunch of teens and LA that robbed celebrity homes. There's also this one girl named Stalker Sarah who like somehow got pictures with like every celebrity ever. <laughs> but it's interesting how like these people, these stalkers, they're so obsessed with the fame and the lifestyle and the influencer. Like 
It doesn't seem like Sophia was stealing the 11 million that's in all of the headlines. It seemed like her main goal a lot of the time was to be there, to be considered their friend, be at these prestigious events and in these people's luxury homes. It seems like she was fascinated by that idea of being an influencer. And it's crazy with all these examples that are similar and now Sophia, these people sort of live in infamy and become famous in their own way for being a stalker to famous people. I don't know if it's good or bad. I mean, it's probably not great to like reward these people with fame, which is something they want, but it's infamy. It's like they're known for being stalkers and liars or whatever. I just find that interesting how that happens. That happened to the Bling Ring crew. They became famous and sort of symbols of like the Y2K era. And it sort of happens in Ingrid Goes West, which is a scripted fictional movie, but deals with a similar concept. She becomes known, not to spoil anything. <laughs> I recommend the movie, it's pretty good. I think it might be on Hulu, but it's a great movie and deals with this kind of concept. So if you're interested in this story and you haven't seen it, I recommend it. But yeah, it's weird how these people pretend so hard to be famous that they become famous for doing that. So I would love to know what camp you're in. Are you feeling more like she should be held accountable ASAP, that she is wrong, or do you respect some of the scamming? I know it sounds like clearly what is better morally than the other, but a lot of people out there respect the scam and the hustle and all of that that she did. I don't think they're reading that far into it either. I think they're seeing the headlines and running with it, but I digress. So let me know what you think about the situation. What is the nuance? I would love to hear about it in the comments below. Sorry this was a more casual video. I just kind of wanted to fill people in about this story and I wanted to research it for myself so I thought it'd be good to make a video about it. It's just kind of random internet drama that happened. It took me by surprise. So that's all I have for this video. We'll see how this story unfolds. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed. I put on new videos twice a week about pop culture, internet trends, and other miscellaneous things. And you can follow me at miscellaneous on Instagram or Twitter to find out about new videos or just turn on the bell notification here on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!